Hello everyone and welcome back to Tech Horizon. My name is Dave and today I'm going to show you how to overclock your Retro Pi. This is especially useful if you want to get as much power out of your Pi as possible to make games run a lot smoother. In this updated video I'm going to go over the best overclocking options for the Raspberry Pi 3, 3B+, 4 and 400 depending on which you've installed Retro Pi on. A quick note, if you're planning on overclocking your own Raspberry Pi you'll definitely need some sort of active cooling. And by the way, you're following this tutorial at your own risk and I won't be responsible for any damage. Now enough with the warnings and let's get straight into it. First of all, you'll have to remove the micro SD card with RetroPi installed on it from your Raspberry Pi and plug it into your PC. Then you'll have to download a special notepad called Notepad++ that allows you to modify the micro SD card's content. And before you ask, no, this won't work with a standard notepad. You can download Notepad++ by clicking on the link in the description below or by visiting notepad++.org. After installing it, open your file explorer and click on the micro SD card you've inserted earlier. In my case it's called boot. Then go down to the text file named config and right click it. Now open it up using the previously installed Notepad++. Once you've done that, scroll down to ARM frequency. If you're doing this on a Raspberry Pi 4 or 400, you'll be able to overclock it to more than 2 GHz. The Pi 4 and Pi 400 can be overclocked to 2.147 GHz without voiding the warranty. And to do so, you're going to have to quickly delete this and replace it with the following. I'm overclocking my Pi 4, so I entered arm frequency equals 2147 and over voltage equals 6. Apart from the CPU, you can also overclock the GPU. I recommend overclocking it to about 750 MHz. To do that, add GPU frequency equals 750. Additionally, if you want your Pi CPU to constantly be above a certain level, you can add the line arm frequency minimum equals whatever minimum frequency you want to set, but I'm not going to do that now. And by the way, all of the commands are listed in the description below so you can copy and paste them. And if your Raspberry Pi is starting to overheat too much, you can simply lower the CPU frequency a little. Now for the ones out there using a Raspberry Pi 3 or 3B+, you won't be able to overclock your Pi to a size 2 GHz, but at least you're getting a bit of extra power out of it. The Raspberry Pi 3 can be overclocked to a maximum of 1.3 GHz, while the Raspberry Pi 3B+, can be overclocked to just around 1.45 GHz. Once again, I've listed all of the different commands that you'll need for each Pi model below, so it's just a matter of copying and pasting. Once you've done that, go ahead and save the text document in order to apply the changes, and then simply close it. After that, eject the micro SD card, plug it back into your Pi and boot it up. Now your retro Pi should be successfully overclocked and you should get less lag and more power out of your Pi when playing certain games. But apart from that, that will be it for today. I hope you enjoyed the video and I was able to help you out. If you found this video helpful, make sure to leave a like. And if you want to see straight to the point tech related content just like this in the future, please consider subscribing. See you in the next one.